Hi, this is Tamara Lackey for The Redefined Show for Adorama TV. On this episode, I'm going to walk through a few of my impressions of shooting with the Nikon D810 for months. This camera came out about six months ago, and I have now put it through the paces on a number of shoots. And I want to talk about a couple of the first impressions I have checking out the camera, as well as some of the experiences I've had shooting. Adorama TV presents The Redefined Show with Tamara Lackey. We're going to do some shooting here in the studio with our wonderful model, Sarah, um, to showcase a few of the new options that the Nikon D810 has over the D800, which forever was my baby. Um, and I'm also going to show a series of images that I have shot on a variety of shoots and talk to how some of the newer aspects of the D810 really stand out when it comes to shooting. So right here and right now, when I'm looking at the Nikon D810, what I noticed the first time I got it was the, um, the very top of the camera is different. If you notice up here, what we used to have were these three options, but also bracketing. Bracketing has now moved up here, this little BKT button, and it's been replaced with the metering option, which I am so happy about because I'm constantly shifting my metering because I tend to shoot in a lot of environments where I'm moving around and the light is changing uh, and the locations are changing. So not only do we have the metering option up here, but we also now have the highlight weighted metering option in addition to all the other exposure options. Um, when it comes to metering, so that is fantastic. Uh, we also still have the white balance up here. One of the biggest reasons I love Nikon is the ability to tweak white balance. I'm gonna show you a little bit of that in a second. Um, so that is still up there as well. This is Tamara Lackey. Be sure to check out Adorama's latest contest to win some fabulous prizes. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up at an ISO of 500. Um, 1 320th of a second and about an f2.5. I'm also shooting with the Nikkor 85 1.4 lens. And uh, do me a favor, put your knees a little bit more towards that and then, then your torso back to me and then just lean forward at like the tummy. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Okay, excellent. You already got the chin going perfectly and her eyes are beautifully lit up. And I'm just gonna do a couple clean shots like this. Fix the hair. And then listen if you will while I shoot. Hear how good that sounds? That really soft, soft shutter click. I love that. I noticed it immediately. Um, that may seem like a little thing, but when you're shooting a lot in um, environments where you don't want to be obtrusive, you don't want to raise a lot of attention, or you don't want to call your subject's mind to the fact that they're taking photographs quite so obviously, that little softer shutter click really makes a big difference. I love that. And I think it sounds more professional overall. It's a big shift from the D800. So um, I do love that. Um, I also have noticed while I'm shooting, if I want to go into a burst mode um, right here, which is what I'm going to do, I now have five frames per second in the Nikon D810. And if you compare that to, say, the Nikon D4S, where you have 11 frames per second, that seems like it's not as much. But you need to keep in mind that we are processing 36 megapixel files, huge, high quality, extraordinary detail, large, large images that are going that fast. So this is a, a note of the burst mode. <laughs> That is pretty fast to be collecting all that information. And, and I get that question a lot. How come the burst mode isn't faster um, in the D800 or the D810? And that is why, because they're such large files. But it is quite fast if you consider that. Um, the other thing I quite love uh, that Nikon does in general, but uh, does very well here, is on the white balance. So at the top of the camera, I can adjust the white balance. In this shot with this frame, I can say, you know what, I think there's just a little bit too much coolness to the shot. I want to warm it up. Um, I don't necessarily have to go in and adjust um, all these little detail settings. I can simply hit, I'm in an auto white balance mode. I can click white balance, the button at the top, and um, adjust to do just a hint more blue or amber. And that is the difference. So blue is going to go ahead and cool the shot more, but if I feel like the shot is a little cool, I will switch to amber and say, all right, right here, just do me a favor and give it a, like a half bump of amber um, or a full bump or two full bumps, and I'm gonna adjust the shot right here and do that. And then I can get that change right in camera. I can do the same thing, go back to shift um, the other way. I'm going to show you um, the way this plays out. 
Beautiful. Now, um, another thing to keep in mind when you are doing white balance is that you can get even more specific than that. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the back of the camera and let me show you what I mean. Um, you want to go down into the shooting menu and you'll see white balance. I mentioned I'm shooting an auto white balance. You want to click through and just keep clicking and click one more time and you can get into this ability to fine tune at pretty incremental little, little bits. Um, get into some more green blues, say you want to warm it up just a little bit. You want to bring in more yellows, some more magentas. Whatever you want to do, you have the opportunity to do that with a lot of customization here. I took this photograph with the Nikon D810 um, in Houston, Texas. It was also paired with the 8514, and it was shot at ISO 400, 1 1250th of a second on F2.8. This is a great example of the sharp focus of the Nikon D810, and the focus is very sharp and very fast. She was kind of hiding and um, really involved with the lamp post, <laughs> like just playing around with it. And it's just a second that she turns her head, but you're able to get the super sharp focused image uh, because of the capability of the camera. This image was photographed, this is also shot with a Nikon D810. This was photographed in Durham, um, again paired with the 85-1.4 lens. The, uh, this was shot, the sun had already been dropping, it's really low in the sky. It was uh, an ISO 1600, shot at 1 1,000th of a second, and I'll explain that in a second, um, at an aperture of f2.8. A lot of people feel like you need to keep that ISO down as much as possible, um, especially if you have a higher ISO. ISO and a higher shutter speed, why would you do both at the same time? Often it is because there is a lot of movement in a low light situation. If you have a lot of movement in a low light situation, you need to have your shutter speed up and you need to have your ISO up. This image was photographed in Cary, North Carolina. Um, I'm shooting, of course, with the D810, and I paired it with a Nikkor 35-1.4 lens, which is a really fast uh, prime lens. And we are both running together, me with my camera and the reflector, which obviously you see in the shot. Um, this is not an image I would turn around to a client, but certainly it's a fun one as far as photography goes, because I know um, that the silliness of running with her and trying to get catch lights at the same time um, and being able to nail a sharp expression uh, is not easy to do and cannot be done with all gear. This was shot, uh, the settings are ISO 1600, um, 1 500th of a second, which is probably the base of the shutter speed I was going to get. It's probably the slowest I could have gotten away with. Um, ISO 1600 because we were going through really dark shady parts of trees and I wanted that ISO to come up a little bit. And it was at F32 aperture. I hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for joining us here on Adorama TV. And don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for all kinds of photography tutorials, walkthroughs, interviews, you name it. Take care. Hey, this is Daniel for Adorama. I'm here at the world headquarters in New York City, and we're going to take a look at the Nikon D810. Okay, so I got one here in front of me. Let's open it up and see what you get. Okay, so we got the body here. It's about 20 ounces lighter than the D800 or 800E. They've also redesigned the handle here for bigger hands. It makes it a little more comfortable to hold, a little more balanced. You've got the power cables, power adapter that'll work anywhere in the world. This here is just the adapter for the, you wanna plug it right into the wall without the cable. You got your nifty strap that says 810 on it. So these little doodads here, you put them on the side of your camera to protect your cables if you got your HDMI cables and stuff coming out so you're not ruining your ports. And we have the same ENEL15 battery that you get with 800 or 800E, but with this camera, you get about 33% more battery life. Okay, so before we head outside, let's take a look at the, the, the body here. This is the replacement now to both the 800 and the 800E. So they've removed the anti-aliasing filter completely from this, so you're gonna get sharper images with that. There is a chance of more ray, of course, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, it's really almost a, a non-issue for most people. Uh, you've got a dual card slot here, SD and compact flash. They've moved around the buttons a little bit, so if you have an 800, 800E, just take a look before you start shooting. Um, on it, I have a 50 millimeter 1.8. This is part of a three lens kit that's gonna be available with the new 1.8 lenses, the 35, 50, and 85. It's a great way to get into primes pretty inexpensively, really nice, sharp glass. Okay, they've also improved the autofocus on this thing. It's got a 51 point autofocus as before, but it's got the XP4 processor, 
which is gonna give you faster autofocus. It's from the D4S. You're also gonna have the group autofocus function, so if you're tracking birds and those kind of things, it'll be great for that. If you are an outdoor photographer, wildlife photographer, or landscape, they've got a first curtain electronic shutter, which basically eliminates all camera shakes. So if you want the absolute sharpest images on a tripod, you're gonna to wanna to use that mode. If you are shooting moving subjects, sports, uh, wildlife, etc., they've upped their game a little bit with the frames per second. You can go five now in FX mode. If you switch to DX mode, which is also gonna give you that multiplier on your lens, which is great, um, you can go six frames per second. And if you use the MBD12 grip, which is, by the way, the same one for the D800, you can go up to seven frames per second in DX mode. Because of the Xspeed 4 processor, you can shoot until you fill your card if you're shooting JPEGs as well. So you can really just motor away as long as you need to. Another great improvement is they've lowered the base ISO to 64. So if you need to drag the shutter, you know, longer exposures, you, you have that going for you without the need of ND per se. They've also raised the maximum ISO, which is gonna help you a lot in low light. So working with this camera, you can go into the low ISO mode, which actually goes down to 32, which is great. And then the high ISO on this is 51,200, which is just crazy high. So for people who wanna, wanna shoot raw, but let's say it can't handle the 36 megapixels, there's too much space processing power on the computer, they don't need to print large. Nikon has a new format, which is SNEF, which is about half the size and 12 bits. So you get much smaller files, uh, which is gonna be easier for you to handle in post. Okay, so we all know this is a great photo camera. It's also becoming a very robust video camera. The two main features that, that I like are they've added zebras for your exposure and also a flat profile, so you have much more flexibility in post. So the, in, in video, your ISO is a little bit different. You can only go down to 50, not 32, but it still goes up to 51,200 if you happen to be where there's no light. So this camera will also do slow motion at full HD in 60 frames. So like the 800-800E, you can get uncompressed video out of the HDMI port to an external recorder. That'll give you 422. You can also record internally to a card, which you could not do with the 800-800E. So you'll get a second copy, or if you want to give it immediately to a client, let's say on a CF card, you can do that as well. Nikon's also added an auto ISO feature. So if you're, you're running gunning, you can put, set your f-stop and, and your shutter speed, and the ISO will shift for you so you can keep a good exposure. They've added a power aperture, so you can make adjustments uh, while you're shooting video to the aperture. All right, so this is exciting. Let's go see what this camera can do in the field. All right, so I had a lot of fun shooting the camera today. I want to thank Nikon for letting us take it out. I really love the new ergonomics of this. The 51.8 was really lightweight, really sharp. We got some great stills and footage, but we want to hear from you. Are you excited about this camera? Which features do you think are the most interesting? How are you going to use them in your work? Post below and let's get this conversation started. Hey, thanks for watching. This is Daniel from Matarama. I'll see you next time. great looking prints at low cost, be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.